redeem his child and forever I am I know I shall see in his beauty king in whose law I delight who lovingly guarded my footsteps giveth me songs in the night redeem 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 by the blood of the lamb redeem redeem his child and forever i am all right well let's go to the lord in prayer father as we come before you this morning lord i want to thank you for all the boys and girls that came this week, Father, and the decisions that were made for you, Lord, and I, Lord, I just uh, lift up this service to you, Lord. I pray that uh, all the, the boys and girls will have a good time, Lord, and they'll learn today, Lord, and I pray also for the adults, Lord, as we have a, uh, the adult service, Lord, that uh, Lord, if someone today does not know you as their personal Savior, Father, I pray that they will make that decision today, Lord, and we'll make sure and give you all the honor and the glory, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, while the rest of the others are coming in, don't go ahead. Okay. I'm going to hold the flag in the Bible. Would please. All right, that's all of us are in here now. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to do our pledges like we did every night in Vacation Bible School. All right, to the American flag and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, to the Christian flag and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. And then to the Bible and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, you may be seated. I can put this in there. And then we have a puppet skit that we had every day. I've never seen a storm like that one before. It must have been a hurricane! It wasn't a hurricane! Hurricanes only happen over large bodies of water. We're more than a thousand miles from the nearest ocean. McGillicuddy's fishing hole is in the next county. That's pretty big. Uh, that's not quite big enough. There's a lot that needs to be cleaned up, but it's nothing we can't handle. What about the seeds? Do you think they're okay? I'm sure they're fine. We planted them the best we could. And remember, they're in God's hands now. What a mess, what a mess, what a mess. Oh, Buttercup, it's so good to see you. Is everybody in the barn okay? Nothing to worry about, Sugar. All the animals made it through the night just fine. Oh, it got a bit scary from time to time. But we were all safe inside. My, oh my, what a storm that was. Ooh, that thunder was so loud. I hate thunder. It always freaks me out. Well, 
Whenever there's a lot of loud thunder, I just remember what my mama used to tell me when I was little. She'd say, Now, Buttercup, that thunder crashing is just like the sound of a bunch of sheep bowling. And since sheep bowling isn't scary, that had a way of making it better. Bowling? I've never heard of sheep bowling before. Oh, sure. They love to bowl. Oh, Wooly even has a 234 average. I don't see Hoover anywhere. Where do you suppose he is? I know he got up early this morning, but I don't know where he went. Hey, dudes. Did I hear someone say my name? I got up early to see what damage there was from the storm. And whoa, you should have seen the hole in the fence. There were boards everywhere. All the animals would have gotten out, so I decided to hop in my pickup truck and go to the hardware store in town to get the wood and nails I needed to fix it. Oh, that's good. No, that's bad. That's bad? Yeah. A few miles out of town, I ran out of gas. I was just sitting there in the road, and the truck wouldn't move an inch. I had to start walking into town. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. It is? Sure it is. I needed a little exercise, so I didn't mind walking. I didn't have to walk for long, though. Soon a friend of mine drove up in his car and offered to drive me the rest of the way to town. That's good. No, that's bad. That friend was my pal Rusty. Unfortunately, I still owed Rusty $5 from when he paid for my lunch at the Burger and Suds two weeks ago. He wanted me to pay him back. That's bad. No, that's good. I'd just gotten my pay from Miss Anna the night before, so I had the money to pay him back right there and then. That's good. No, <laughs> that's bad. After I paid him back, I realized that now I wouldn't have enough money to get the wood and nails I needed to fix the fence. I was so upset, I just sat on a bench and stared at my feet. Oh my, that's bad. No, that's good. Of course. While I was sitting there, this little bulldog walked up and sat right down next to my foot. Well, I had just seen a lost dog poster in the window of Sam's Barbershop with this dog's picture on it. So I called the phone number on the poster and the owner came to get her dog. The dog was so happy that I reunited him with his owner that he licked my face. That's good. No, that's bad. The dog had stinky dog breath. But his owner was even happier than the dog was. And she gave me a $25 reward to show her appreciation. That gave me enough money to buy the wooden nails I needed to fix the fence. Plus, a can of gas to fill up my pickup. That's good, I think. You're right. It totally was. You're not going to say, no, that's bad? <laughs> no way. I got everything I needed to fix the fence. I got to see a buddy of mine, and he even came back and helped me fix the fence. We're already done. Plus, I helped a nice lady get her dog back. So when the fence broke, it seemed like a bad thing, but it turned out to be a good thing for everyone, for you, your friend, and that lady and her dog. That's the way things work sometimes. We go through things that seem like they are bad at first. Like last night's storm? Or a hole in the fence? But God has a way of taking everything that happens in our lives and making it work out for our good. It's still not easy to go through the bad stuff, though. Of course not, honey pie. But at least we can remember that no matter what, God has a plan and he's always in control through the good things and the bad things. I'm just glad everybody stayed safe. But we'd better get busy. It looks like we have a ton of work to do to get Cowabunga Farm cleaned up. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. Because after we're all done working... I'm going to fix some of my famous prize-winning blueberry pie for all of you. Now that is good. Let's get to work. I'm hungry already.
at this time, I'd like for the cast of the puppet show to come out. I'd like to introduce them. Give them a moment here. They've done a, a great job all week. And uh, uh, they did this one especially just for me this morning. I'll just come line up up here in the front. I know y'all like the behind the scenes stuff, right? All right. We had Ryan. Ryan was done by Madison Kyle. And Hoover was done by Techie Wood. Allie was done by Gabby Bailey. Mrs. Anna was done by Mrs. Megan B. Harry. And, of course, Buttercup was done by Mrs. Amanda Shiflett. Thank you all very much. Piggy, 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 piggy. This is Buford. He's been a member coming to VBS every day this week. Y'all saw him last Sunday. Buford, what are you doing? I'm looking for my pig, Porky. Have y'all you, have you seen him? No, I, I haven't seen him. Brother Roy, have you seen him? Shame on you. That's not, that's not the Porky we're talking about. Have any of y'all seen Porky? Have y'all seen Porky? Have any of you kids seen Porky? Huh? What What does he look like? Well, he's messy, he's pink, he's got a curly tail, he's got a big snout, you know, kind of like Brother Roy Wood, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What else? Well, he escaped and I, he's real messy and I can't find him. Is this pig happening to be made of paper? Yes, he actually he is made of paper. Buford, I, I think I, I think I found him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where's he at? I haven't well, seen him. He's he's behind you back here. No, no, no. He's he's back here on he's on your back. Oh, he's on my back. Yeah. Get, do you need me to get him off? For you? Yeah, if you get him off. All right. Hey, there's Porky. Why? Why do you have a paper pig? Well, you know. Real pigs are real hard to take care of. And this farming stuff, it's real tough. And I thought, thought I might start with a paper one. It would be maybe a little easier. Yeah, this farming stuff has been a little bit hard. But look at how good you've done this week and how far you've come. I don't know. I know I've learned a lot with Joseph and how he had to trust God and what all he went through. And I guess I, I, I can trust God too if, if I'm going to do this farming thing. Absolutely. You've learned a lot of stuff about Joseph and all his circumstances that he's had to go through and how God helped him and he had to trust in God's promises. But just like Joseph, God can help you. That's right. That's right. It sure has been a great week. Uh, thank you for coming to VBS. We sure are going to miss Buford, aren't we, kids? Yes. things to do that we've done this week. i got to have Cletus and Bodine up here. All right, Cletus and Bodine. All right, all week we've had this contest. The boys versus the girls. The boys are winning three to two. And the winners gets to 
throw water balloons at Tim Tim. Yeah. All, all right, boys and girls, are we ready? Yes. Did you bring your pennies? Yes. All right. We have... Who's on this side? Girls. This side? Boys. All right, let's listen up. We're going to start with the back row of the kids. We got we have all one row. All right, we're going to start back here. G girls on this side and boys on this side. No, 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 no. Girls that side. That's a lot of pennies. All right, who's coming next? They're coming. All right, boys over here. Girls, you got to go over here. No. Oh, mercy. All right, we have another row here. No? All right. Let's get the big row. All right, let's... Come on, Joe. That's what I like to see, boys. Them big old bricks of pennies. Whoa. Look at Jack, son. He brought a wagon. A wagon full of pennies. All right, Jack. There you go, Jack. You got it? All right. Let's see if we can get you another one in here, Jack. There you go. Now look at that. The boys came to play. Good job, Jack. Hey, get your wagon. Get your wagon. Well, hey, you're a boy. You can't put it in the girls. I might be a boy, but I'm also a gentleman, and a gentleman always helps the girls, right? <laughs> Traitor. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh. oh right. Hey, 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 hey. Just because it's a brick and it says penny doesn't mean it's a brick of pennies. That's, that's, that's cheating. That's cheating. Oh, Buttercup has one, huh? Oh, for the girls. Oh, we got some more girls up here. Come on. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Let's just drop them in there. All right. Oh. There's there's something right here. No, but it, it it shows you're a guy. You see that, Joe? He's helping the girls. No. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, Joe. Just put it in a hole right there. There we go. All right, all right. Oh, now they're begging.
Right here, right here. I'm not just anyone. All right. Hey, Jack is a boy. Where are you going? You gotta go somewhere. <laughs> Cletus? You can't leave Uh-oh. in the middle of the office. Yeah. Where's Cletus going? I don't know where he's going, but come on, guys, let's keep going. You put it up here if you want. <laughs> I don't want to fall. Oh. Ready? Alright. Alright. Ready? Three. Two. Once it's there, it's there. <laughs> you, 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 you can't cheat. You can't cheat. <laughs> Alright. Three. Two. One. See? See what you did? You caused a boy. <laughs> All right, good job, everyone. All right. Now we're going to sing. We had a blast when we sang this week, and we enjoyed it. Me and Brother Tim did for sure. All right. First one we're going to sing is our, our main song. If y'all will stand, especially kids, y'all can stand. The rest of you can. But the words are up there. Let's go. On the farm where the corn wind blows On the farm where everything grows All the animals are fighting for life And we can go to be more like Jesus Christ A cowabunga farm God took us everywhere On cowabunga farm He's faithful and he cares We'll grow and play and have fun each day on Cowabunga Farm. On the farm where the sun shines bright. On the farm where every high. On the corn growing every day. Will it guide as we follow in his way? On Cowabunga Farm God's with us everywhere On Cowabunga Farm He's faithful and He cares We'll grow and play And have fun each day On Cowabunga Farm The cows are mooing And the horses are neighing The corn is reaching to the sky When we sing praises with our hearts Our faithful God, Wabunga Farm, God's with us everywhere on Cowabunga Farm. He's faithful as he cares, we'll go and pray and have fun each day on Cowabunga Farm. On Cowabunga Farm, God's with us everywhere on Cowabunga Farm. And he cares for we'll grow and play And have fun each day On Cowabunga Farm On Cowabunga Farm 
now among the farms. All right, this is the one we really had fun with, and you got to get in the in the the the, the character for this one. So I ain't gonna put. I, I don't wear a hat in the church. I don't wear a hat in the building. Daddy told me not to, but in this one you got to do it. So, all right. And if we do, what do we do? The doot doots, okay? Y'all ready? All right, let's go. Ready? Out on the farm, there's lots to hear. There's lots to hear. Out on the farm, ready? Do 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 do. Do 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 now do do do. Out on the farm I hear a chicken. Out on the farm I hear a sheep. Out on the farm I hear a goose. Out on the farm I hear a cow. Out on the farm there's lots to hear. There's lots to hear out on the farm. Do 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 Out on the farm I hear a rooster. Out on the farm I hear a horse. Out on the farm I hear a pig. Now I'm all. Out on the farm, I hear them all. Out on the farm, there's lots to hear. There's lots to hear. Out on the farm. Do, 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 do. I told you we had fun with that one, okay? Hi, y'all may be seated. All right, uh, we're going to let the, uh, the kids head, head back to their classes. They've got some fun things to do while we'll be in here in church. Uh, they, they get to go get in the class. They also get to go to the store. They've earned bucks this whole week, and so today they get to go and spend it. And I know they're going to be excited about that. I remember a few years ago, last time we did this, they thoroughly enjoyed it. So they're going to have themselves a good time, and we are too. If you'll get a songbook, turn to page number 18. Song num- songbook, page number 18. And let's all stand, and we'll ask the men come forward to see the offering 
on the last course, page number 18. Take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. At the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him. When our journey is complete, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. morning everyone thank you all for coming out today and uh, we're going to receive the offering now as we receive the offering remember to be thankful that you have something of which you can return 10 percent to the lord and remember that god said he loves a faithful or a cheerful i forgot the word god said he loves a cheerful giver so have a happy heart returning to the lord something of which he has provided I'm going to ask Brother Roy Wood to leave some prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for the, the wonderful work we've had with VBS, Lord. We thank you for the freedom to have this service in this church here today according to your word, Lord. And we just want to reach up and give you a great big hug right now and say how much we love you, Lord. And, and as, as we take up the offering, Lord, I, I pray that we will open our hearts to you, Lord. And and that you will take this offering and you will use it to your services, your glory, Lord, and that many people will be blessed through this service today and through the ministry supported by this offering, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you'll join with us. Bring the power of the Holy Spirit down. Fill Pastor Lamb up with the power of the Spirit, Lord, and just teach us to be more like you, Lord. Lord, we love you, and we just pray all this in the precious name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I would like to say the the cow puppet, Buttercup, we are so thankful to uh, Grace Baptist Church over in LaPorte, Brother Rawls. Uh, I knew they did this same program at their vacation Bible school, so I called him. I said, can we borrow? We tried to order it. They were sold out totally. And so his wife had gotten it, so we were able to borrow it from them, and we are so thankful we didn't know what we were going to do with a, without a cow because that was the main thing. So we thank them for allowing us to borrow it. 
and I will get it back to them probably this next week to make sure nothing happens to it. So we're looking forward. But thank you for coming. We had a great time, and I think the kids did. I hope the, the kids went home and told their parents what they heard, and that was the important part. All right. I was guilty with nothing to say And they were coming to take me away But then a voice from heaven was heard That said, let him go Take me instead And I should have been crucified And I should have suffered and died I should have hung on the cross in disgrace but Jesus God's Son took my place The crown of thorns the spear deep in his side and the pain it should have been mine those rusty nails were meant for me yet Christ took them and let me Go free, and I should have been crucified, and I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. Jesus, God's Son, oh, Jesus, God's Son. Jesus, God's Son, took my place. Take your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter number 50, if you will. Genesis chapter number 50. The children have been studying the book, The Life of Joseph, this week at Vacation Bible School. And the life of Joseph ha- has been quite informative for them because uh, they've seen the various. Uh, aspects of Joseph's life. And uh, I'd like to share a little bit about that with you this morning. And uh, I will tell you that I asked them to, to do the puppet skip, uh, skip today for uh, that was done Wednesday night. That was the only uh, day that I was here for vacation Bible school. Uh, I've injured my back somehow. The doctor thinks probably uh, 3,150 3, miles of driving. Uh, on vacation had maybe something to do with it. He even suggested, why, I don't know, that people over 40 uh, tend to have problems in the lower back when they do such things. 
And I asked him, I said, are you saying I'm over 40? And he goes, well, maybe 41. Anyway. But Wednesday night was the only night that I was here. And uh, that was the skit that they did. And uh, I thought about that skit as I was thinking about Joseph's life and as I was thinking about uh, our personal lives. Because uh, honestly and truthfully, uh, in our lives, we always think, man, is anything ever going to happen to me again? Do you ever feel that way? I mean, you go, oh, man, again? It just seems like it just keeps pouring on and keeps pouring on and keeps pouring on. And when's this ever going to end? And, and we're kind of like uh, uh, Hoover was, well, that's good. No, that's bad. Well, that's good. No, that's bad. No, that's bad. No, that's good. And when you go through Joseph's life, that is a, a testimony to Joseph's life. As you think about Joseph's life, Joseph, as a young boy, uh, was it re- God revealed to him what he was going to do in life. Now, many adults are still trying to figure out, what does God want me to do? Is there anything that God wants me to do? I sure would. Preacher, can you tell me what God wants me to do? I'm struggling with what God wants me to do. You have to, you're on your own on that one. Honestly and truthfully, when you stop and you think about uh, our lives, we just, you know, what I was told as a, as a teenager when I got saved, and I wanted to know, what is God's will for my life? And I asked the preacher that. He said, I'll tell you what God's will is for your life. Just do what you know you're supposed to do, and God will reveal it in his time. Now, I'm kind of jealous of Joseph because God, when Joseph was just a little boy, God revealed to him what he was going to do in his life. And uh, by that, uh, you say, well, that's a good thing. No, that's a bad thing. When you think about Joseph's life, it's because Joseph had a dream. And Joseph's first dream was that uh, he was out in the field with his brothers one day, and, and they're out there harvesting the crops and, <clears throat> and, the, uh, and the weed, and they're hand, standing them up in their sheaves and, and all that they did back then. And, uh, excuse me, and uh, <clears throat> the, um, uh, Joseph's sheaf, sheaf was there, and all of his, the other, his brother's sheaves bowed down to him. And so he ran to his daddy and he said, Daddy, he said, guess what? I had a dream. <clears throat> and they said, well, what's your dream? And he said, well, I, we were working out in the field and he tells this dream with, that they were out and they had their sheaves and, and, and all of the other sheaves bowed down to him. Well, that said that, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you, yes, please. Uh, said that when um, uh, Joseph got older, that he was going to be the leader of the family of his brothers, and all of his brothers were going to bow down for to him. And you say, well, that's great. Joseph knows what's going to happen in his future life, and he knows that, uh, that he's going to be the leader, and his family is going to be bowing down to him, and that's great. No, that's bad, because now his brothers are jealous of him. And so, as they, as they go on, Joseph has another dream. Thank you, Brother Roy. <clears throat> and he dreams, and in that dream, he, bow, he, that he, he dreams that the sun and the moon and the stars are going to bow down to him. And that sounds like it's a good dream when you hear the interpretation of it. Excuse me. In the interpretation of that, and Joseph's father, Jacob, knew immediately what it meant that, the, that he, as the, as the father of the family the leader of the family was going to bow down to his son Joseph as well as his mother, the moon and the stars. and uh, The moon and the sun and the stars. And so, of course, that just was good, right? <laughs> nope, that was bad. It was good because Joseph knew what was going to happen, but it was bad because what? Because now his dad says, wait a minute, boy. What are you talking about? You need to stop and consider this. It's okay that you say your brothers are going to bow down to you, but your mama and I? I just don't think so. Of course, that just made his brothers more upset with him. Well, Joseph, of course, was the favorite of the sons. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> and his dad goes and makes him this beautiful coat of many colors. 
And you say, well, what is that coat of many colors? That, that is a, 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 a symbol that his dad is giving him that he's going to be something special in the family. That's good, right? Nope, that's bad. <laughs> because now his brothers are even more jealous. They're even more. They're, they're, now they're, they're plotting against him. And the older boys are out tending the sheep, and they're, they're getting them pastured down and all of that. And, and Joseph, uh, Jacob tells Joseph, Now, son, I want you to carry this cheese, and, and, and I want you to carry it to your brothers, and I want to check on how they're doing. And they see him coming a long way off, because when you've got a coat of many colors, you're pretty bright. They see him coming, and they start plotting. They see him out there, and they go, huh, Here comes that dreamer. They, dig, they, they dug a pit and they threw him in that pit and, and Reuben was trying to, trying to save him. And then they came along. Here comes these Ishmaelites and, and they're, they're coming and, and they sell Joseph, their brother, into slavery. Now that's bad. No, that's good. And the reason it's good is because this is God's plan. And as we go through jo- Joseph's life, we see the bad side and we see the good side. Well, you know, as Joseph is there and his father has mourned his loss because they've brought his coat of many colors with blood on it and said, now, you, you see, this is your, uh, is your son's coat. This is the one you made him, right? And it's, and it's got blood on it. And well, and Joseph or Jacob immediately says, oh, he's been killed by a wild animal. And all that's left is this coat that I made him. That's bad. Because what, Joseph, what Jacob thought about Joseph wasn't true. And the brothers knew it wasn't true. And so as you go on and you see now ja- ja- Jacob, or I'm sorry, Joseph now, I'm getting my, my J's mixed up. Uh, Joseph now is in, in Potiphar's house and, uh, and he's there and, and he's doing a great job and he's trusted with uh, everything that Potiphar has. Uh, and then his wife, Potiphar's wife, sets her eyes on Joseph. I mean, she looked on him. She wanted him. The Bible doesn't tell us how good looking Joseph was. But there was something that attracted her to Joseph. Can I submit to you that what attracted her to Joseph, number one, was his godly character. Even though he was in slavery, even though he was having uh, was not with his family, didn't know what had become of his family, even how all those things, and you say, well, that's really bad, but no, it was good. And here comes Potiphar's wife, and she set her, her mind on him and, and, and set her lust on him, and, and, but she, one thing she saw was his godly character. Not only did she see his godly character, but she saw his integrity. Because she kept making advances to him and he kept refusing her advances. That's good. We see that as good. And then we come in and we see again that now then she's just not going to take no for an answer. And so she starts uh, and really pressuring Joseph. And Joseph does the right thing. He begins to run because he has godly character and he has integrity. And he, as he runs, she grabs a hold of his coat and she pulls it off of it, uh, off of him, and he runs. That's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because now she has evidence. She has evidence, and she begins to cre- scream and cry, "Ray!" <laughs> they come in and and she says, "Look, this, this this foreigner that you brought in and you set over your affairs." He tried to have his way with me. And I have his coat to prove it. Joseph gets stuck in jail. That's a bad thing. No, it's a good thing. Because while he's in jail, he makes friends with the jailkeeper. And he begins to show that... uh, uh, that he has godly character and integrity and he's doing the right thing and he becomes a trustee underneath the jailkeeper and he has free reign in the jail. 
He's doing the right thing. There's two in the jail, a butler and a, and a baker. And, and while they're in the jail, they both had dreams. And, and they were worried and burdened about those dreams. And, and so what happened? Joseph interpreted both dreams. He told the one, he said, now, <laughs> when um, the king calls for you, he's going to lift your head up and you're going to die. He told the other one, he said, now, you're going to be set free. You're going to go back and you're going to be back in the service of the king. And that's a good thing. When you get there, remember me. Two years, the baker was back in his, or butler was back in his position and didn't remember Joseph. That's a bad thing, right? Well, no, it's really a good thing. Because God gives Potiphar a dream. He says, now, what? Uh, and he has his dream and his troubles, and he calls in all of his soothsayers and all of his magicians and all, all of those people. And he says, I had, I had a dream, and I can't remember what it is. And they said, well, you tell us the dream. We'll tell you what it is. And he goes, no, I can't do that. You tell me. And none of them could, could do it. And finally, they, the butler said, oh, I remember just now my error. Bring Joseph in, and Joseph interprets the dream. There's going to be seven years of famine, and seven years or seven years of plenty, and seven years of famine, and, and Pharaoh puts him over everything that he has. Everybody had to go into Joseph to ask for more food. That's a good thing. But here we go, and. There's a famine in the land, and of course the land of Judah is in famine, and, and, and Jacob says, I heard there's food in, in Egypt. You go over to Egypt and you find out there's food. That's a good thing. No, that's a bad thing. Because when they get there, Joseph recognizes his brothers who put him in slavery. And being the person that Joseph was, he goes, ha, <laughs> Now I got them right where I want them. No, that's not what Joseph did. That's what we would have done. <laughs> now they're in our web. Now they're in our lair. Now they're, and we're going to get even with them. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. It's not our jobs to get even with people. Let God take care of their problems. And so here we go, and, and so Joseph realizes these are his brothers, and he keeps one of them as a slave and, and sends the others back. And, and Jacob says, we're... He goes, they tell the story. Finally, there's, just, there's no food left, there's nothing. And Jacob says, no, we've got we to gotta go back. You've got to go back, and you've got to get more food. We're going to die, we're going to perish out here. Uh, in this land and Reuben says well we can't go back unless we take Benjamin with us <laughs> no 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 you're not taking the baby I don't know how old the baby was then but you ain't taking the baby he said you got Joseph he's gone he's not with us any longer and now you won't take Benjamin what's going to fall with Benjamin he's going to die over there he's going to become a slave over there and we'll never see him again no Finally, Reuben convinces him and said, look, his life or mine. They go back to Egypt and they go back into Joseph's house and Joseph sits down and ha has them sat with, uh, in, in order of their ages and, and has the food put on, but Benjamin gets the he heftier portions. And they're looking at each other and they're going, man, this is because of what we've done. This is because of what we've done. Joseph couldn't stand it any longer, and he put the Egyptians out, and he goes to his, calls his brothers together, and he reveals himself to them, and that's a good thing. But it's a bad thing. Because the dream came true. The dream that they would bow down to him came true. And in their minds, they're thinking, uh -huh, he's fixed to get eaten. He's fixing to put us to that. He's fixing to get, get revenge on us. Finally, they bring Jacob back into the 
uh, into Egypt and and he sees his son again and then he dies and that's where we pick up in our reading today in Genesis chapter number 50 I'd like to begin reading verse number 15 it says and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead they said Joseph will per, per adventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which he did we did unto him and they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. You see, even though Joseph had been kind to them, even though Joseph had uh, cared for them through the time that they were uh, there in Egypt and made sure they had uh, land, the land of Goshen, which was the, the best of the land, and given them uh, provision and took care of them, all of these things, they just couldn't get it past their minds that Joseph was just waiting for that one opportune moment to put them down. However, we continue reading in verse number 19, and we say, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. <coughs> When you think about Joseph's life and you reflect on your own life, how does that match up with someone whom you dislike? See, we all have that one person in our life that is just that thorn in our flesh. That one person that if we could just have a moment of pleasure, we would make their life miserable. Joseph had that moment. Joseph had the opportunity to get e even with his brothers. They hated him. They ridiculed him. They sold him into slavery. They lied to their parents. They faked his death. I mean, you have a laundry list of things that his brothers did to him, and yet Joseph says, fear not. Am I in the place of God? Am I in the place that is going to, uh, to judge you because of what you've done to me? And the truth to that, in that answer would be, no, Joseph is not going to take revenge. I read the statement that his brother sent a messenger to Joseph. If you look in verse number, uh, let me find it real quick. Verse number 16, and they sent a messenger unto Joseph. And I got to thinking about that. Those wicked brothers of his didn't even have the nerve to get up and to face their brother with what they had done. That's what I read into that, and I'm thinking now, they're really not that remorseful. They're not really that, 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 that interested. All they're wanting to do is save their lives, spare their lives. But then I got to praying about it, and I got to meditating on it, and that statement there that they sent a messenger was the proper thing to do because if you remember in, in, uh, in Egypt, the Egyptians could have nothing to do with the Hebrews. In fact, if you remember, 
when he set a, his first feast up, he was at a table by himself. They were at a table by them by themselves, and the Egyptians were at tables by themselves. In other words, they couldn't elbow each other. They couldn't hobnob together. They couldn't be at the same tables with each other because that was what protocol was. And because of Joseph's position in the in the nation of e of Egypt, they couldn't just go in. to Joseph and say, hey, bro, everything's great. We come to talk to you. They had to send someone to gain permission to be in his presence. But if you continue to read, you notice what he said. He said, in, uh, 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 they sent a messenger, and he says, so shall you say unto Joseph. And they said that in verse 18, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. They came to Joseph the right way. Now let's change gears. Joseph in the Bible is a type of Christ. A type is a prefigure of something that's going to happen in the future. And if you remember that Joseph's brothers and his mother and his father were going to bow down to him. Now, Jesus is a, Joseph is a type of Jesus. If you look and you read the story of Joseph, you don't find any sin in Joseph's life. Not that he didn't sin. Because we're all human and we all sin. But what we see is the progression here is that as they came and as they saw and as they experienced what they saw... They, they, they came to the one who had their lives, his, their lives in his hands. The one that had the ultimate control of whether they lived or whether they died. When we go into the New Testament, if you will take your Bibles and turn uh, to the book of Luke, chapter number 23. And while you're turning to Luke chapter number 23, I, I want to submit to you that Jesus Christ, God's Son, holds our eternity in His hands. Jesus Christ, God's Son, holds our eternity in His hands. If you look at the story, verse chapter uh, 23 and verse number 1, And the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered unto him, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Come down to verse number 13. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people, and behold, I have, uh, I having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, not yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. If you will, take your... Uh, Bible and look over into verse number 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And they said, He said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And there were, they were instant with a loud voice, 
requiring that he must be crucified or might be crucified, and the voice of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that had for uh, sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. In this story, we see an opposite. We see, rather than the man that's been in favor all of this time, willing to let go of those who deserve death. And yet we have Jesus on, on this occasion, as if you read the story of Jesus, he was beaten, he was battered, he was assaulted, he was maligned. They lied against him in, in, in coming up with fictitious stories. When it was offered that he should go free, or would they rather have Barabbas? Barabbas was, a, uh, was a, uh, in for sedition. Sedition was political uh, 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 uprising. They were, he was there trying to cause problems in Jerusalem with the, those who were in political control, and he was there and also for murder. And you put Barabbas on this side, and you put Jesus on this side. What crime had Jesus committed? Absolutely nothing. He healed the sick. He caused blind eyes to hear, see, deaf ears to hear, lame legs to walk. He raised the dead. As he was, they were walking down the street of Jerusalem, there was a funeral procession. And, and there was a widow woman with her, who had just lost her son. And as she's, they're walking down and she's weeping over the loss of her son as they're headed to bury him. Jesus comes up and, and touches the bear and, and raises the boy back to life and restores him back to his mother. That's the kind of funeral procession I want to be in. There's... Nothing but good in this man. And even when they tried to find fault in him, they couldn't find fault in him. They had to come up with people who would lie rather than tell the truth. You continue to read the story of the crucifixion. Verse number 34 of chapter 23 says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for my sin. And he died on the cross of Calvary for your sin. You and I are deserving of death and hell. There's no good thing in us that recommends us to God. We can bring our, our, our pennies and, and we can have a penny offering and we can have a challenge between the boys and the girls. We could, we could bring all of our, our money and, and our offering and bring it in and, and place it at the, uh, at the feet of, uh, of the pastor and say, this is my good deed, this is going to get me into heaven, and that's not going to do it. You can, uh, you can, uh, uh, there's people always standing at the corner of Garth and, and Main, or uh, Interstate 10, uh, re wanting money. There's a, a, a young lady and a man standing there now uh, with a sign that says, just 50 cents would help us get some food. They're there every day. Just 50 cents will help us get food. But I've seen more than one vehicle give them more than 50 cents. One stands on one street corner, the other one stands on the other street corner. And you can say, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a $1,000 bill right here in my billfold. I'll pull that $1,000 bill and I'll give that to those people that, so that they can eat. And then you can say, well, I can get into heaven because I've done a good deed. I've given money to help the poor. You can stand before me. And say, I, I can tell you right now that I have been very honest in my life. 
I've been very moral. I've taken care of my family. I, I've worked hard and I, I have saved money and put it in there so that my children will have an inheritance to, uh, to fall back on when I pass from this life. And I have all of these things that, that I've done. And, and list, look at the list. In Luke chapter number 18, there's a man. He goes in the temple to pray and he begins to lift up his, his voice and he begins to look up into heaven and he begins to pray and say, Dear God, I'm thankful. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I, I, and he begins to give a laundry list of things that he's done in his life. And then he looks down his nose over at the corner. There's a publican over there. And he says, And I'm thankful I'm not like that publican. The publicans were the most detested and hated uh, of, of people group. Uh, in the in the community, and I'm thankful I'm not like him. Here's that old publican standing over there in the corner. He won't even lift up his eyes towards heaven, and he he's there beating on his chest, saying, "God, be merciful to me, a sinner." And Jesus says, "Now, which one of those do you think is going to be justified? Which one? The one who has all the accolades and all the list, and is in the who's who of uh, of anybody and." And, and is published around the world as being the Nobel Peace Prize winner and all of these things. But it comes down to one question. One question. Just one question. If you were to die right now, do you know 100% sure for a Bible reason you have a home in heaven? What would be the answer to that question? Do you know that 100% sure? You say, well, nobody can know that for sure. Well, I have a Bible. You can go to there, the verse if you want to. You can write it down and go to it later. It's found in First Thess- I mean, uh, First John chapter number 5. First John chapter number 5, towards the end of your Bible. And it makes this statement. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. That word know there is just like you know your name. When people come up to me and they say, uh, hey, how are you doing? I say, I'm doing fine. Uh, and they'll tell me their name. And I say, my name's Bill Smith. Brother Bill doesn't know who I am. He says, I think I know you. But Brother Bill Smith is, it, it comes up to me and he says, now, he said, I'm Bill Smith. What, what's your name? My name is Jim Lamb. Now, there's two things I know for sure from that conversation. That's Bill Smith. He knows his name. He knows something for sure. My name is Jim Lamb because I know my name. I've never had to pull my billfold out and look at my driver's license and say, oh, yeah, that's who I am. I've never pulled out my cell phone and, 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 and dialed my mama's number and said, what's my name? I know my name. You know your name. There's no question about it. Just like you know your name, you can know 100% sure for a Bible reason you have a home in heaven. Because God said it. Romans chapter 9 verse 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, I wouldn't have, be hard-pressed to prove that all of us are sinners. If I went around the room and said, okay, you tell me one sin that you've done in your life. Everybody could tell me at least one. One infraction. Most of us, and I'm pointing the fingers at myself, can possibly say we've never, there have been times in our life, in my life, that I have not been completely honest and I've told a lie.
I can admit that. I can say that. You see, the Ten Commandments are what we call our guiding rules. And everybody says, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. I always ask, which ten? You say, is that a trick, trick, a trick question? No. And if I went around the room and I said, okay, you tell me, what are the Ten Commandments? Very few of us in this room could give you all ten of the Ten Commandments. Think about it for just a minute. And you know which ones we really remember? It's the last six. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long on the earth. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet that which belongs to somebody else. And you know, and, and, and you, you remember those because that's personal. You don't want somebody stealing from you. You don't want somebody killing you. You don't want somebody lying to you. You don't want somebody uh, uh, committing adultery with your with your spouse. You don't want somebody uh, uh, wanting and coming and taking what what's yours that you've worked hard for. And we remember those. But what about those first four? First four. There's only four of them. God says number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven images of anything in heaven above, earth beneath, or anything below the earth. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it. How are we doing on those four? See, that's part of the Ten Commandments. It's not suggested. It's not just if you decide you would like to do it. That's how our kids are. We tell our children not to do something, and we go, they go ahead and do it, and, and you go, I told you not to do that. Well, I wanted to. And so I think I could make a case that we're all sinners, and I think I can make a case that because of our sin, God says we have a judgment on our sin. The children quoted uh, Romans 6, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 3, chapter 3, verse 23. But verse 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. What you earn for your sin is death. It's not just a physical death, because we're all going to die physically sometime. My grandmother was 105, but she still passed away. Granddaddy was 97, but he still passed away. You see, death is imminent. In fact, there's a cemetery right out here. To let us know that every time we pass by it, every time we see it, someone's planted there. The wages of sin is death, but I like the second part of that verse. But. God doesn't leave us in hell God says but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord the gift of God a wage is something that you earn that you work for and that's where we can say well I give this and I do that and I've been a a really good person those are all things that are accolades and praises for yourself as you lift yourself up and you exalt yourself but God puts it down on the very level that we need to have it on but the gift of God a gift is something you can't work for, you can't labor for, you can't... You, 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 there's, there's nothing you can do to earn it. God says, I want to give you a gift. And that gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ died for your sin and my sin on the cross of Calvary. You say, that's a bad thing. No, that's a really good thing. Because we are not worthy. Jesus put it this way in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. How are you trying to get into heaven? How are you trying to get there? On your own works? 
Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Your only entrance into heaven is through Jesus Christ and Him alone. You say, how do I get there? You get there by faith. You ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, forgive you of your wickedness and your sin, and you receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Your only hope is heaven. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for the truth of the Word of God. I'm so thankful that Almost 44 years ago, I heard a message in this context. And I made the way to the old-fashioned altar. And I put aside my good deeds, my good works, my good thoughts. And I came to Jesus and I asked Him to save me. I've not regretted that all of these years. Lord, if there's somebody here in this service this morning, that if they were to die right now, they do not know with confidence that they have a home in heaven. Lord, I pray that they would come and ask Jesus to come into their heart. They could come, take me by the hand, and say, Preacher, I heard what you said, and I don't want to go to hell. I want Jesus to save me. Right now it's a bad thing, but it can be a good thing. Lord, I just pray that we would see your goodness this morning. Father, there's somebody here this morning that they've been out of church and they haven't been serving you. and They haven't, Lord, they know they're saved. They know they're going to heaven. Lord, I pray they'd make it right with you today in an old-fashioned altar. God, speak to hearts this morning is our prayer. In Jesus' name, with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, no one looking around. God spoke to your heart this morning. Pianist is going to play an invitation number. If you need to be saved, you come take me by the hand. We'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If you're saved and you know you're on the way to heaven, you can come to an old-fashioned altar just do business with God and make things right with Him. As she plays, you come. What's good this morning is that you're being offered an opportunity to be saved. If you're not saved, this is your opportunity. But you can make that bad by walking out and not trusting Christ as Savior, not having that hope of eternal life. This is your opportunity. Seize that opportunity this morning. Folks are at the altar praying. God deals with your heart. You come. people said amen thank you for being here this morning appreciate you bringing your children and your grandchildren this week uh, you've had an awesome time and uh, i tell you they you could see by the program and what we did that it was all geared towards them and uh, we always look forward to that this is one of my favorite times of the year is to do the vacation bible school uh, just a couple things before i let you go number one is uh, that um, 
uh, we're having our 55th anniversary as a church on August 21st, uh, and we'll start the service again at 10.30. We'll have Sunday school that morning. Uh, we will have dinner on the grounds and all that kind of fun stuff that we do. Uh, Brother Tommy Druitt, uh, uh, a friend of mine that I've known since uh, I was 16 years old, and you know, I think he was about, I don't know how old he was then, but anyway, uh, <laughs> Uh, he's going to be here to sing. In fact, he's going to be here not uh, next Sunday. He and his wife are going to be here. They're just passing through and he's going to come in and sing for us. And then he's coming back on the 21st of August. Uh, you'll really enjoy it. Uh, it's a blessing uh, to know him all these years. He's been with, he's remained faithful. Uh, lost his first wife to leukemia and uh, he married again. And, uh, they just continue to, to go uh, in music evangelism, singing and, uh, and working for the Lord. You'll be blessed by them. Uh, also, uh, on a sadder note, I have a funeral tomorrow um, here at the church at 10 o'clock uh, for Jonathan Gonzalez. Jonathan is a young man who's been coming to our church. Um, you might remember him. He's kind of tall, a slender uh, young man. Uh, last Sunday he was here, had a suit on. Uh, Sunday night he was here, just had a polo. But uh, he passed away on Wednesday. Uh, he lives in my neighborhood. We're doing the service here tomorrow. Uh, and uh, just remember his family in prayer. This is very, very difficult uh, on the family, uh, but we're going to present the gospel. Uh, I would like—I would like to encourage everybody that could possibly be here tomorrow at ten. Uh, just come to the service; it would be a blessing because they—they they need to know that he—that he was well liked here, uh, and that uh, it was a, a blessing uh, to know him. This is the second uh, child that this, this parent has lost. Uh, they lost a daughter uh, several years ago in a car accident, and then Jonathan died Wednesday. Uh, so do be in prayer for that family, if you will. Now come back tonight at 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock this evening, uh, for our uh, evening service. Again, thank you for being here, and we do appreciate it. We bow for prayer this evening, especially this service. Um, I hurt you to do this in prayer.